stage often for, for happening tonight. This is the first live in-person performance uh, that I've done in the US, or actually in all of the American continent since um, March 15th of 2020. Uh, and I'm normally somebody who plays a lot of concerts, so uh, this is a very, very, very special occasion for me. And uh, I'm very happy to be doing it here. Uh, I've actually never been to Utah before except to change planes in Salt Lake City. Um, I'm a big outdoors guy, I love the mountains. So I feel like there's no better place to be resuming touring and performing than right here. So thank you very much, Don Stage Ogden. I want to say a few words about the program I'm going to perform. Uh, Johann Sebastian Bach would have been 336 years old today, or 10 days ago, depending on how you count. <clears throat> but who's counting, really? Um, he, of course, is a very important figure in musical history, and um, he's been particularly important to me. Growing up in Paris, France, uh, I went to the conservatory starting at age six, and the main thing they have you play at the conservatory in France is Bach. And I absolutely fell in love with his music uh, as a young child, and the love has only deepened ever since. But simultaneously, I was inspired by my grandfather, who is a jazz pianist uh, in Eugene, Oregon, a town not that unlike Ogden, Utah, I, found, I find. Um, who, and, uh, and I thought of myself as an improviser. And I always loved to make up music. So I grew up with these um, competing poles in my, in my music. The, the, on the one hand, the love of perfect music, like the music of Bach, where every note is so exquisitely crafted. And on the other hand, um, improvised music, where there's an opportunity for the truth of the moment to shine through in a way that I find very compelling. Um, I also grew up with, I grew up in France with American parents, so there are those two cultures. And I also grew up with a biologist father and an opera singing mother. And so I've always been kind of between science and very rational ways of thinking and art and uh, more intuitive ways of thinking. So that tells you a little bit about me and maybe that'll explain a little bit more about uh, why this project came to be. Bach wrote the Goldberg Variations in 1741 or 1742, around there. And um, we don't really know all that much about why he wrote them. There's this apocryphal story that says that there was a Count Kaiserling who um, had insomnia, and the Count Kaiserling commissioned Bach to write him a set of pieces that could be played to entertain him in his sleepless hours. And Count Kaiserling, and this is actually factual, had a court harpsichordist named Johann Gottlieb Goldberg, who was 13 years old at the time. So the story goes, and this is a story that was first reported 100 years after Bach's death, that the Goldbergs were written for Johann Gottlieb Goldberg to play, and hence they took on this moniker of the Goldberg Variations. Bach did not publish them as the Goldberg Variations. He published them as volume four of his keyboard studies. And that tells you, first of all, that the story about Count Kaiserling, Count Kaiserling is almost certainly false because in those days when something was commissioned by someone in power, and especially if they gave you money, you really got down on all possible limbs and uh, expressed your enthusiasm and your gratitude in the frontispiece of the, of the piece. And there's none of that with the Goldberg Variations. Secondly, the Goldbergs are really hard to play. And uh, it's really hard to imagine a 13-year-old, especially in those days, playing them, although not inconceivable. Um, but th I think it's interesting to, to recognize that the fact that they were published as keyboard studies says something about Bach's intention. In the Goldberg Variations, Bach states the aria, which is this theme, it's a very beautiful theme, 
Tadam tarla di da yadudeyom. Tadam belli di da yadudeyom. And that theme is stated at the beginning and is stated at the end. And in between, we have these 30 variations, which people like to say, and I think this is a very true statement, explore every possible facet of human emotion. And what ties these uh, variations together is not the melody of the theme, not the melody of the aria, but actually the harmony of the aria. So first of all, about Bach's intention, when you hear each one of these variations, you, you very immediately hear how he has didactic intentions in each one. Each one is so specific. Um, you know, there might be one that explores a particular kind of technical challenge. There might be another one that, uh, I mean, and by, by which I mean a, a technical challenge at the keyboard, right? Something about hand crossing, something virtuosic. There might be another one that explores uh, the canonic possibilities in inversion uh, of, the, of this set of harmonies. Uh, there might be another one that explores a certain dance rhythm of the time. He's bringing very, very specific ideas to each one of these variations, and, and so they feel like studies. So, of course, I discovered the Goldberg Variations when I was 13, and then I started playing them when I was, tw when I was 20 or so. And the first thing that, that came to my mind was, if Bach is using the harmony of the aria to, in, to, to, as kind of a basis for new ideas, how about if I use the harmony of the aria and try to improvise with those same ideas? And that was something very fruitful for me. Um, and this is a project that took 10 years to mature. But um, what's interesting is that when it came out in 2011, I never would have expected that 10 years later I'd still be playing it. But in fact, because both the Goldberg Variations themselves are inexhaustible, and because in this project I'm improvising in between each one, you heard that, right? I'm going to be improvising after each one of Bach's variations. I'm going to be improvising my own variation. Because of these two things, because improvisation is as new as, as you care to make it in the moment, uh, the project has only become uh, more and more fun for me to play. So, um, one final thought, two final thoughts. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's important to remember that Bach wrote the Goldberg Variations for a, a two-manual keyboard. That's a harpsichord with two manuals, two keyboards. Um, and so there's a lot of hand crossing in, in the program. And when you have two keyboards, you kind of just go like this. But when you have one keyboard, like on the piano, you go like, like that. <laughs> and so that's one of the very fun geographical elements of playing the Goldbergs on, on the piano. And the last thought is, it's important also to remember that um, Bach, in his own lifetime, was actually most famous as an improviser. This is not something that everybody knows. He was as famous as a person could be in those days as an improviser. People traveled great distances to hear him improvise at the organ in the church. And um, he also had 20 children, so he must have had a sense of humor. With that, thank you all for being here, and uh, thank you for coming along on this journey with me, and I'll see you in a little while. One last thing I forgot to mention, but... Um, there will be CDs of this project, uh, if any of you still buy CDs, um, available at that table right there. And, and this might be a little bit random, but um, as part of a completely different project of mine called Natural Machines, I've been 3D printing earrings that represent major and minor triads. And I brought just a couple of those in silver and bronze. So if anybody wants one of those, you can have those too. Thank you.
Thank you.